Hey Cake Chums and Mini Chums and welcome back to another episode of Mr Baker's Cake School. I have been absolutely loving all of the photos you've been sending me of the baking you've been doing at home and I have to say your scones this week looked amazing. I'm going to slot in a few of the pictures that you guys have been sending me but don't panic if you don't see yours this week because there's always next time. Now this week, because it is Good Friday after all, I gave you the option of choosing between traditional hot cross buns or the slightly easier hot cross muffins. Now I can understand that quite a few of you were intimidated by the idea of working with hot cross buns because we'd be using a yeasted dough, which we haven't done yet in Mr. Baker's Cake School. And for a while it looked like the vote was going to go towards the muffins, but then the buns made a bit of a late comeback and the results are now in. And in this week's video, we're going to be tackling traditional hot cross buns. Now, as I say, they are a little bit trickier than anything we've tried before, but they're super fun to make. And actually, when you get to the end and see what you've created, I bet you'll be so proud to show them off. Not to mention, everyone will be so incredibly impressed that you made them. But anyway, that's enough from me. Let's get to the video. Now, rather than run the risk of this video being about four and a half hours long, I'm gonna get straight to the point and tell you the ingredients that you need to assemble to make your hot cross buns today. Just to warn you, there are a lot of them. So I'm not going to be weighing them all out on camera like I do sometimes. In fact, if I lean over, you can see that I've already done it. To make your hot cross buns, you are going to need 260 milliliters of milk, ideally whole milk, but I'm gonna confess I've got semi-skim today because it's all we had. 450 grams of strong bread flour, 70 grams of caster sugar. Again, golden is better, but I'm using white today. Two teaspoons of cinnamon, one teaspoon of mixed spice, one teaspoon of salt, 10 grams of fast action dried yeast, one egg, 50 grams of softened butter, 100 grams of sultanas, 40 grams of raisins, 50 grams of mixed peel, and the zest of one large orange. As always, don't panic if you can't get hold of all of these ingredients now. This video will be staying up on my channel permanently, so if you can't have a go at these this week, by all means come back and have a go in the future. Now before we get started, as always, it's time to go and wash your hands, put on your apron, and let's get baking. Okay, so just before we get cracking, I do want to reassure all of the parents watching that I have tried to simplify this recipe as much as possible. So if you're sat there thinking, absolutely not, this is way too complicated for us to do as a family, then hopefully you'll see as we work our way through it that that isn't the case and this is still something that is completely achievable with your little ones. But anyway, let's get to it. So, first thing I need you to do is take your 260 millilitres of milk and warm it through till it's kind of what we would call hand hot. So it feels hot to the touch, but not unpleasantly so. I did mine in the microwave for about 80 to 90 seconds, and now that's perfectly ready to use. So I'm just gonna set that to the side over there. And in the meantime, we're going to put our dry ingredients into our large bowl. Now, as always, if you have a stand mixer like this one over here, then by all means you can make this recipe in there with the dough hook. But like I've said in previous videos, I want this to be accessible to everyone, which means I don't want to use any specialised kit if I can avoid it. So, as last week, as with the week before, I'm just using a very large, bog standard mixing bowl. And that's what we're doing. So into that, I'm going to put 450 grams of strong bread flour, which I have already weighed out and sifted. And with that, we're going to put 70 grams of caster sugar, and all of our spices. So that's two teaspoons of cinnamon, and one teaspoon of mixed spice. Now when you're working with yeast, 
there are a couple of things you need to be careful of and one of them is not allowing salt and yeast to mix too quickly because the salt can kill the yeast. So we're going to add our salt to one side of the bowl and our yeast to the other. So salt can go down this side and yeast down that side. And then just like last week with our scones we are going to make a well in the centre which hopefully you've remembered means we're going to dig a hole. Once you've done that, you need to pour in your warm milk and add your egg. Then using a regular knife, or I've got a palette knife here, I'm going to start to bring the mixture together, just like we did last week for the scones. When it's starting to clump like this, we're going to add in our butter, which should be nice and soft at room temperature. I have to be honest, it already smells pretty amazing, thanks to those spices. And then keep stirring until it comes together into one lump of dough. When it's kind of got to this stage, so it's all in one big ball, I'm then going to switch from using the knife to using my hand and just really thoroughly squeezing and combining it all together. It will be very wet and sticky. So don't worry if yours is like that, it means you're on the right track. When you can't see any more of the lumps of butter or anything, and it's starting to look quite smooth, we're going to turn it out onto the worktop and knead it. Now because this is quite a soft, sticky dough, it's much more easy for little hands to work with. If you're making bread you might find kneading quite tough. The only thing you do need to be careful of is because it's sticky you might need something to help you get it off the work surface. I'll show you what I mean. So I have this tool which is called a dough scraper and that you use this when you're kneading your dough to scrape it off the side so that when you're kneading it you don't miss any out. Now what we want to do is knead our dough until it's completely smooth without any lumps. You should find that it gets less sticky in that time too. It usually takes between 5 and 10 minutes. The technique you want to use for kneading is that you push the dough out and stretch it and then you fold it back in on itself. Can you see because it's so sticky it didn't really come back and that's why we used it the dough scraper or the bench scraper to help us. So stretch it out, bring it back in. Stretch it out, bring it back in. Now I should explain, I'm no expert with making breads and doughs. I'm much more comfortable with cakes. someone who likes playing with slime, you should find this really fun. After about five minutes, you can see that I'm very sticky. This is still very sticky, but it's starting to come together in a much more kind of stretchy dough than it was before. I'm going to add in my dried fruit. Now I'm using 100 grams of sultanas, and I kind of think these are fairly essential in a hot cross bun. So I'm just adding those to the top here. And then you can be quite creative with the rest of your fruits. Today I've gone with 40 grams of raisins and 50 grams of mixed peel. But you could try mixing things up and perhaps putting in some dried apple, some cranberries, anything you enjoy eating really. And then what I'm going to do is fold this dough up over the fruit and then carry on kneading it for about another five minutes. Once you feel like your fruit is pretty evenly dispersed throughout the whole dough, what we're going to do is take another clean large bowl if I can find it. And I'm just going to put some oil in the bottom, just a tiny bit, and then spread that around. 
What this will do is stop the dough sticking while I leave it to prove. The proving is when the yeast does its thing and makes the dough rise, as you'll see. So, once you've done that, carefully lift your dough up, place it into the bowl, and then we're going to cut this with cling film and leave it for one hour to proof. Now it's a lovely warm day today, so I can just leave this on the worktop and it will do its thing. But if you were doing this in colder weather, then you might want to put it somewhere warm in your house, like the airing cupboard. So as I say, now we have to wait for an hour. So now is the perfect time to have a jolly good clean up and go and do some washing up. I'll see you in an hour. One hour later. Okay, so it has been just over an hour and you should see that your dough has increased in size. Um, normally for a bread dough we're aiming for it to double in size, this hasn't quite done that. In fact, I'll pop up a picture of it kind of at the start of the proof and then the end of the proof so you can see how it's grown. But there is going to be another proof before it goes in the oven. What we want to do first of all is knock our dough back. And that basically means that we just get rid of some of the air that's built up from that yeast expanding. To do that, you literally take a fist and punch into your dough, like that. And then what we're going to do is tip this out onto a very lightly floured surface. and just give it another quick lead. Now we should have enough dough here to make 12 hot cross buns. So to find out how much dough to use for each one, we're going to weigh this and then divide that number by 12. So my dough weighs 982 grams and 982 divided by 12 is roughly 82. And then basically what I want to do is cut off pieces of dough that are about 82 grams each. Hopefully you should find that as you do a couple, you get a bit more accurate. Okay, so once you've weighed out your 12 equal pieces of dough, we're going to form these into our bun shapes. And to do that, we're going to form almost like an upside down cup shape, or like a claw with our hand. Place that on top of our bun, and then just roll it around on the surface. We want to be quite firm pushing it down, because we want any kind of seams to blend together. Then, just check it's a nice round shape, and we're going to place that onto a baking tray. I've lined mine with greaseproof paper, and we want to space these out evenly because they are going to grow during the next proof and when we bake them in the oven. And you should end up with something that looks a little bit like this. Now you'll see at the moment I have left little gaps between all of those buns. So what will happen during the next proof and while they're baking the oven is that they will continue to expand and to rise, which means that all those gaps will close up and they'll bake together, meaning that when it's time to serve them, you'll be able to tear them apart and have a nice, soft, fluffy edge on each of them. So what we're going to do now is get our piece of cling film back and this time, just like we did with the bowl before, we're going to brush it with a little bit of oil just so it doesn't stick to the tops of our buns. And then we turn it over so that the oily side goes on top of the buns. So we're going to leave those for their second proof for about 45 minutes to an hour, depending on how warm it is where you are right now. One hour later. Okay, so hopefully if your hot cross buns look anything like mine, they should now be almost joining up, which means that they are ready to go in the oven. But there's one more thing that we need to add, but you can tell me what it is. Yes, our hot cross buns need their crosses. So to do that, you need another bowl, 
And if you've been organized like me and done the washing up while you were waiting for them to prove, you should have lots of clean bowls ready. And in here, I'm going to add three tablespoons of normal everyday plain flour, not the bread flour we've been using, and three tablespoons of water. There's one, two, three tablespoons of plain flour, and one, two, three tablespoons of water. Now, we have a really good mix. And then to actually put the crosses onto the buns, we're going to use a piping bag, like we used back in episode one when we made cupcakes. Now, if you don't have piping bags at home, don't worry, because you can do exactly the same thing using a sandwich bag. Just put your mixture into it, squeeze it down towards one corner, and then snip off the end, which is kind of exactly what we're going to do with our piping bag. Now, I should let you in on a secret. One of my least favorite things to do when people are watching is piping. So I'm having to be really brave and resilient to do this. Bet lots of adults who've been helping you today have had to be really resilient too. Hopefully it will all be worth it when we take how delicious these are. So what I'm going to do is just cut off the tip of my piping bag, and then I'm going to run a line all the way along from one side to the other. And then when I've done that, I'm going to go in the opposite or perpendicular direction and go this way, and that will give me my crosses. Let's see how much of a mess I can make. And then these need to go into your preheated oven at about 190 degrees fan for about 18 to 20 minutes. While they're in the oven, I'd like you to mix one tablespoon of sugar with one tablespoon of boiling water to make a glaze that we can then use on our buns once they come out. And that will make them nice and shiny. I'll see you soon. 20 minutes later. And as always, through the magic of editing, just like that, they are done. Because the sugar is the ingredient that makes the bakes go brown, where we left it out of that mixture we used for the crosses, you can see that they've stayed a lot paler than the rest of the bun, and that's how we get our crosses. So the last job is to take these out of the pan, put them onto a cooling rack, and brush them with the sugar syrup that hopefully you made while they were in the oven. Now, as I always say, when things have come fresh out of the oven, they are incredibly hot. So please ask an adult to do this bit for you. I don't want anyone hurting themselves while they're baking along. Because we put that baking paper in there, it should be a fairly simple job to just slide the hot cross buns out onto a cooling rack. And then we can take our sugar syrup and a brush and just brush it over the top of those buns. And you'll see it makes them have that lovely shine that the ones you find in the shops have. Now once you've mastered the basic hot cross bun, you can start to play around with different fillings like I talked about earlier. But also, why not try putting some additional flavours into your sugar syrup? You can mix in a little bit of orange zest to make them even more orangey. You can put some additional spices in there. Why not try some lemon juice? And there you go guys, just in time for Good Friday, your very own homemade hot cross buns. Now my favourite way to eat a hot cross bun is to wait for it to cool down, slice it in half, pop it under the grill or in the toaster, and then spread it with a little bit of butter and let it melt in. And they're absolutely delicious. But who can resist having a little preview when they're fresh out of the oven? That is good. So there you go guys, that was episode three of Mr. Baker's Cake School. And though we weren't making cakes this week, I still hope you enjoyed it just as much. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up to let YouTube know to show it to more people. 
And if you haven't yet subscribed to Mr. Baker's Cakes here on YouTube, you can do that now by hitting the red button down there on the right. If you hit the bell icon, that will also make sure you get a notification every time I upload a new video. If you do decide to have a go at my hot cross buns this week, do please send me a picture to one of my social media channels. All of the links are down in the description box below. I absolutely love seeing what you guys are baking at home and it really does make my day to see all of you having lots of fun with my recipes. But anyway, all that remains for me to do this week is to wish you all a very happy Easter weekend. I hope you have a lovely time with your families at home and I'll see you this time next week. Take care guys.